In today's Blender tutorial, we're going to learn how to create this very simple yet premium looking logo animation. We'll go step by step. So let's start step number one. In our default scene, we're going to go ahead and press X and delete the default cube. Now we'll press shift A and search for a mesh circle. And before we do anything to the circle, we'll go to this drop down over here, click and change the number of vertices from 32 to something much higher. The resolution depends on you. I'm going to go with 500. Now I'll press seven to go into the top view and press tab to go into edit mode. Of course, if tab does not work, just use the drop down over here and then press F to create a face. Once you've created the face, you can press 1 to go into your front view and press E to extrude and extrude it to a height that you feel is sufficient. So I'm actually going to extrude it by 0.2 units. Once you're done with that, you should get this particular cylinder and we need to duplicate this to form the rings. But the way we want to duplicate it is by first duplicating all of these side faces over here. And to select all of them, we can go to face select mode by pressing this button over here, just selecting one of the sides, zooming in if necessary and pressing shift plus all plus select to select the entire edge ring. So once you have the entire edge ring selected, you can press shift D to create a duplicate and then press P to separate by selection. So once you've separated it out by selection, you should have the original circle as well as the faces that you just duplicated. So we'll rename the original circle to logo and we'll change the new circle that we just created to ring. Now we'll be duplicating the rings and we'll be adding the logo to the logo circle. So we'll just go back into object mode, make sure that we select only ring and then press tab to go into edit mode and then press A to select everything. Then you can press seven and you you can press Alt E and choose extrude faces along normals. And now you can just extrude it out by maybe some amount or instead of extruding, you can actually press just E and enter and then scale it up by a specific amount. So we'll go with 1.1, but we don't want to scale it on all of the axes. We want to not scale it on the Z axis. So we press Shift Z and I think 1.1 is a bit too thin. So I'll make it 1.2. Once you're done with that, press tab to go back into object mode and then press Shift D S Shift Z 1.2. That should give you another ring which is exactly larger than the first ring. So the end of the first ring is the inside end of the second ring. So now if you did all of that in one single shot, if you press shift R, it'll repeat the action and you'll get a third ring and you can just do this to get the number of rings that you want. So I want five rings to be present and the last ring which I just added in will act as our back plane. So to create this into a back plane, you can go back into edit mode by pressing tab and you should have this outer edge ring selected and with that selected, just press S shift Z and and drag it up and that should be enough. Now the next thing that you need to do is actually add in your logo. Now if you have import images as planes add-on enabled you can skip this step but if you don't you have to go to edit references and then go to your add-ons tab and search for import images as planes. Make sure that this add-on is checked and then close it. Now you can press shift a and search for your logo and add that in. For that you press shift a image images as planes and then select it. When you select your logo make sure that you keep the blend mode at blend if you have some transparency present and I'm actually going to change the material type to emit so that it is independent of the lights in the scene. After that, I'll go ahead and press import images as planes. Now, of course, the image appears on the wrong axis. So we'll press Alt R to clear rotation and then press G Z and just bring it up. Now, in order to actually see the logo, you can press this button to change your viewport shading to render. And in case you have a logo with a black or a white background and you want to remove it, check out this video over here where I go through how you can actually remove the black backgrounds or white backgrounds and make them completely transparent. Next, I'll just place this exactly on top of the plane. So I'll press one to go into my front view and then press G Z and drag it down till it perfectly aligns. So just about there is all right. And now I can select the plane and shift select my first ring and press control P set parent to object. So now if I was to take the ring and rotate it about in any direction, the Blender logo would also rotate about with it. So I'm just going to press R Y 180. And then we see that there's a slight issue because we don't have the origin present at the center of the object. We have it down here and that's why it rotates about the origin and it actually goes down. So to fix that, we can actually select all of these and then go to object set origin origin to geometry. That way the origins come up. And now when you actually rotate it on the Y axis by 180, it should still remain absolutely flush with the rest of the plane, but it will be rotated by 180 degrees. Now we can start the animation. So let's set all of our animation and render defaults. So let's go to our render properties, switch on loom and screen space reflections, then go to the output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second and frame can be whatever you want it to be. So I'll go with 150 so that it's a five second long animation. Output folder can be wherever you want to save it. File format, I'm going to choose FFmpeg video and encoding, I'm going to change it from Matros 
Tosca to MPEG4 and I'm going to keep an output quality of perceptually lossless. Now I'll select this and tap I rotation and then on frame 120, I'll just rotate it so that it comes up on the Y axis and I'll also rotate it about some multiples of 360 on the other axis as well. So I'll go with RY 180 and then I'll go RX 360 and maybe RZ minus 360 and then I'll press I rotation. So now when you play the animation, you should have this rotate about in multiple different axes until it finally ends up coming and landing exactly there. Now we essentially have to do the same thing with the rest of the rings. So let's select the first ring, go to frame zero and tap I rotation and then go to frame 120 and just rotate it by multiples of 360 on all three of the axes. So RX 360, RY maybe 720, which is 360 into two and maybe RZ 360 and then I rotation. Then just watch how you should get different rotations for the two different objects and that's the animation that you get. Now we can go ahead and do the same thing with the next ring. So select it, go to frame zero, press I rotation, go to frame 120, press R X minus 360, R Y maybe minus 360 and maybe R Z 180. Remember rotation about the Z axis won't matter too much for these. So I think this should be fine. So press I rotation. Now let's look at what it looks like. And that looks pretty good. We've missed out animating this ring over here, but I think I'm going to actually leave that non-animated because even that adds in a layer of depth. Then let's take the second last one and do the same thing and just add in a few keyframes and definitely do the same thing for the last ring as well. Now, when you play the animation, you should get something like this, where all of them rotate about in different ways and they finally end up perfectly matching up and you get the logo revealed at the end. If you're happy with the way it's looking, you can go ahead and set materials and then play with the lighting and finally the camera. So let's set materials by going to the material properties and just giving in the default material to any one of the rings, then select all of the other rings while making sure that the one that has the material is selected last and then press control L link materials. So that way all of them will have the same material. And now you can just give it some base color. It can be whatever you want it to be. I'll go with something more or less desaturated and I'm going to increase the metallic all the way to one. And I'm actually going to reduce the roughness as well down to 0.3. As for the light, I'm actually going to increase the radius and I'm going to press G and just grab it over to the side so that we get some sort of a gradient like this. And as for my original blender, no logo, no text image, I'm actually going to increase the emission strength from one to something like two. I'm also going to change my view transform from filmic to standard so that we actually see the real colors. And in order to have something present in the background so that we don't actually just see into oblivion, you could give the background some color or you could add in a plane with some color. In my case, I'm just going to give the background a very slight tint in the same color. And with that, I believe the last thing left to do is add in my camera. So let's select the camera, press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, then press G Z to just drag it up. And once it's above the scene, you can press zero to go into your camera view and then just watch the animation. Now, obviously this is too zoomed in. So press G Z and move back to just about there. And now you should have the perfect logo animation that brings it in. If you want to be more fancy about it, once it comes in and perfectly lines in, you can select the camera, press I location, and then by around frame 140, you can press G Y and just bring it down by a bit and make the term blender come in. So if you have some image, you can actually bring that in. In fact, I think that's what I'll do. So I'll press shift A, image, images as plain and choose the Blender logo with the text. And of course, just to see it, I'll switch on my overlays, press G Z to bring it up and then G Y to bring it down just below the term and just centralize it till I'm happy. And I don't want the logo to be present again over here. So I'll press tab to go into edit mode, press control R to add in a loop cut and just slide it to before the B. And then I'll go to face select mode, select this particular face and tap X and delete faces. So that way we now have Blender under the logo. If you want this to actually be centralized, you can actually click object set origin to geometry and now make sure that this has a value of zero on the X and that'll actually make it perfectly centralized. And to actually bring this in, we can bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window, change this to the shader editor. And now let's just drag this to the bottom, press shift A and search for a math node and add that in between the alpha channel over here. Then we'll change this from add to subtract and we'll switch on clamp. So if we subtract out a value of zero, we'll essentially get the entire thing. But if we subtract a value of one, we're gonna have it completely disappear. So on frame 140, as we said, we'll have to add in a keyframe to the camera. So let's select the camera again, press GY minus 0.5 I location, and then select this, change this value to zero and tap I on frame 140. But by frame 120, make this value one, and that way it'll be completely transparent and it'll slowly appear as it goes up. In fact, you should have it appear after we go up. So let's select my camera and just move these keyframes back by a bit. And that's actually it. With that, when you're happy with it, you can go ahead and press render animation. This entire thing can be customized in so many ways. You can use texture coordinates to give some texture to the actual rings. You could add imperfections or change the way this rotates. It doesn't even have to be circles. You could use pentagons, squares, hexagons. It's 
completely up to you. I really hope this inspires you to create something extremely creative. And if it does, be sure to check out other videos on my channel as well, because they might inspire you as well. I post videos every single day. So until the next video comes out tomorrow, keep creating and stay creative.